Okay, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today I want to introduce you guys to this cute little, um, it's a little folio. I know I've been making folios a lot lately. And yes, I just recently made one for my gift tag organization uh, for the holidays. But this one's a little bit different. It's more of an ephemera for um, a junk journal that you can either tuck in with a clip or glue it down flat into the journal and um, I'll just show you a couple of examples of that um, in one of my junk journals but I just want to show you guys this little cute thing that I just made actually okay honestly it took me all day to make this all right between <laughs> between uh, breakfast lunch and now it's almost dinner time it took me just about all day <laughs> to make this so yeah let's just take a look at it it's just a cute little piece of ephemera that I put together um, from some paper this paper came from a package of Tim Holtz um, backdrops and that looks like this right here it's called backdrops by Tim Holtz ideology oh can you even see that sorry I forgot I zoomed you guys in really closely but it's called backdrops by Tim Holtz ideology that this is very first volume um, that he made I'm sorry for the glare if there is one but these are the pictures or pictures of the images on all of the paper that's in this package and this package of paper measures 10 by 6 or 6 by 10 depending on how you want to say it um, so that's what I made this with one of his um, ideology backdrops and um, yes I did use one of them for the uh, front cover and the um, yeah just basically the front cover and this little pocket right here and then back here is another one of his uh, images from that same package and this one is a map of London and I'm looking for a date but there isn't one. Oh wait I think that says 6 8 72 all right, I know it's really tiny, but I'm wearing my glasses so I can see that. And um, yeah, 6872. So this is a map of London. And um, yeah, it just has like a little, oh, that sounds like a real hinge, doesn't it? I, it has like a little flap hinge right here um, with some pockets and tucks. So I just tucked in some of uh, this new package of people that I received. And these are his paper dolls also by Tim Holtz and I tucked in some uh, little pieces of ephemera some authentic um, certificates of approval written in probably Mandarin or Cantonese or something um, just some little t bits and bobs some tags and other items now listen okay it did take me all day to make this so I'm expecting this to be a really long video <laughs> And I'm sorry guys I know I like the short videos too the ones that I can just go straight through no editing 30 minutes boom we're done project over but this right here does require some measurement I can't get over this hinge <laughs> it's just glue oh goodness anyway uh, yeah so let's just go ahead and make one I'm probably going to make two maybe one on camera but I will make two of these because I think they're so cute they can definitely be um, a cute little addition to any junk journal let's say you've given someone a junk journal in the past and now they're like well I've only been writing in my journal because I don't know what ephemera is here you go something to play with inside your junk journal um, just you know some place to house all of your bits and bobs or your tags and tickets just various um, little some things that you can keep inside of a junk journal so let's make one all right and um, I also want to tell you guys that even though I use Tim Holtz um, backdrops paper this can also be done with junk okay garbage literally garbage like this right here is a package um, from some washi tape that I bought and it turns out that this is the exact measurements that I would need for the background of this guy right here alright it's a six by 
um, maybe it's like six and a quarter by 14 even. So you can cut this up into various strips and use something like this. That's like, um, you know, it was going to go in the trash, but I kept it because I, I'm a saver of garbage. <laughs> no, because I know that you can use, um, you can use junk to make different things and that's why we do junk journaling. I know that you can use things that were going to go into the recycle bin or into the trash completely and then just reuse it and make it into something interesting. And this right here all by itself is totally interesting. So anyway, I am going to show you guys how I made this little guy. And um, yeah, I'm going to make mine. This one that I'm going to make next will be for my autumn uh, gratitude journal which happens to be a little bit smaller okay so I'll be right back all right guys so I brought in my big guillotine my large scoreboard it's under here I brought in my journal and my fall uh, gratitude journal or autumn gratitude journal depending on how you want to say that so this is just one of my very first journals that I made it has quite a number of signatures in here six signatures fit into this two inch spine um, so this is just one that I play with a lot I um, use this as prop for a lot of my ephemera that I make and you know I do photos with it and you know such like that so um, here is the the little folio that I made piece the ephemera and I just have it clipped in right now to my junk journal and as you can see it fits perfectly in here with the little ball nose clip if you want, you can also um, glue it down. Um, I would just glue down the top portion of it because mine is wrapped with elastic. So the elastic will come around the back. If the top part is glued down, you can still reach back here. Can you even see? I'm sorry. You can still reach in the back here and pull the elastic forward or use um, Velcro as your closure for right here. I'm using elastic. It's removable. I will clip mine in with the bull nose clip and I'm going to go from there. I just want to show you guys what's inside of here. So I have a little piece of gingham or I guess this is like tablecloth or whatever, but maybe it's gingham or check or plaid or what have you, but a little piece of vellum covering up the front cover. Here is just a little, um, I made these little tabs. I'm calling them tabs. They're actually clothing um, labels that you would stitch into a piece of clothing after you've, you know, either crocheted something or hand sewn something or, you know, taken it to your sewing machine. Anyway, I used some of Tim Holtz paper dolls, did a little bit of a collage on the front cover, on the inside here, just um, some embellishments with a tag. And over here, some more embellishments, a little ticket of sorts, holiday pass, and people, you know, Tim Hall's paper dolls. Back here is a little paper bag, okay, and I'm using it as a pocket. Initially, I wanted to use it as a double pocket, like use both sections of it, but then I remembered that I have my elastic glued down back there, so it will not um, go all the way in to the pocket, the front pocket. But um, back here is a very large, um, almost seven inch pocket on the back here. So, um, and I just used a paper bag to make that part. So here is the paper bag that I'm talking about. It's like a little, a little card sack. I don't know. I don't know what this would have been used for otherwise. I bought a package of it. It looks, it looks like this. It's 12 bags. I don't know who makes this. Hello Hobby paper bags. Yeah, it's like, I'm not sure what it would have been used for. Maybe a card can fit in here. So here is a card envelope. Yeah. So like perhaps a card can fit in here. And uh, okay. So it's about the size. This is a four by six um, envelope. And this is my paper bag, which measures about four and a half by seven all right so let's move on um okay so yeah on the back side is one of these these paper bags 
and um, yeah you can either glue it or clip it so if you're clipping it in elastic works fine if you're gluing it down I would use a velcro dot even a magnet would work right here as well so the choice is yours I'm gonna go ahead and put this away because we need to get the measurements for the new one that we're going to make. And this is my Autumn Gratitude Junk Journal that is also very stuffed with things. <laughs> and I have to find a blank page. Okay, so yeah, we can do, we can do it here. I'm going to take the measurements of this page because that's going to determine how big the back section of, um, like the, um, the backdrop of the entire thing is going to be. Also, I also have to consider, will this bag fit in here? And it does, okay? So regardless of what size I make it, it cannot be any larger than this paper bag. So, that said, um, I just for, um, for the sake of measuring it, I'm just going to get the measurements of this page and I'm guessing it's just under five inches. My paper bag measures also just under five inches, four and three quarter inch. All right, so I'm gonna set my journal aside and grab some stuff to start making stuff, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna make a fall um, little uh, ephemera folio using some really dark colors. So I'm just pulling paper from the side of my desk here. And I think this would make a great little, a little something. All right, I got some really dark blue. Oh, that comes out really pretty on camera. I can see that. And um, yeah, some little fall foliage and animals. So we're gonna work with these two pieces right here. And um, I'm going to start with this being my base. And this will be my inside um, pockets, tucks. Uh, what else do I have in there? The inside base. Okay, yeah, so let's do that. We're going to use this dark blue as our... Hmm, now that I'm thinking about it... I think I'm going to use this one as my base and the blue as all of my embellishments and whatnot. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm just going to cut this down to six inches. And again, if your paper has, a, has directions and your folio is on the horizontal, you also want to turn your paper on the vertical cut it and then everything will be on the horizontal and everything will be right side up as well okay so now that will become my folio this is single sided paper I pulled out of a paper pack and I think I will need my guillotine again but I think now that I've cut it down I can use my smaller guillotine but I still need my large scoreboard okay so I am going to flip this over uh, score and cut the uh, paper I'm basically going to score this at two spots right we're going to score it at three and three and a half three and a half will be our cut mark three will be our fold mark and then we are also going to score it over here at eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter will be our cut mark. And eight and three quarters will be our um, score mark. Okay. And then we're also going to score this at... Um, Oh, let's do 10 and, let's do 10 and 3 quarters, okay? So all we've really done was cut our 12 by 12 sheet of paper down and uh, to 6 by 12 and scored it in 5 spots. 3, 
three and a half, eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters, and ten and three quarters. That's it. Now we're going to remove some of these sections. So let me just go ahead and get my folds and my cuts together. So this is a fold. This is a fold. Okay. And this is a fold. And these two inner score marks will be my cut marks. I'm going to grab my small guillotine and cut it right where I told you guys we're going to do it. Okay, that's removed. And that's removed. All right, now we have a base going for where everything is going to live. I am going to um, cut away little tiny triangles on the edges of both my, these will become flaps, basically. These are just the flaps that are on the outside. Um, they're, they're just gonna hook onto the edge of the paper. I know you guys have done this a million times, but <laughs> it's just gonna hook onto the edge of the paper and become a little flap, okay? and or a hinged closure. I'm just gonna cut away little tiny triangles like so, just to reduce down some of the bulk on the back side of the, the base. And, and then I'm going to take my base card and flip it over. So now this is the inside of the card and this is also where the other hinge is gonna go over here. All right. And this one is a pocketed section over here, and this one will have a slant pocket going over there. Now my, um, my closure is just slightly overlapping, as opposed to the other one that's like fully overlapping. I know it's hard to see, but um, yeah, there's just a bare, a bare, maybe a, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch overlap on here. So there isn't going to be much to put a Velcro dot on or magnet. Um, we're going to have to use elastic again, which I'm perfectly fine with. Now my paper bag is going to go on the back side of here once we start gluing things down. And I'm just measuring it up to size to make sure that my project is not much bigger than the paper bag and it will fit into my Autumn Gratitude Junk Journal. So there's that. Okay, so over on this side, we're going to do a slant pocket, and I will use my pretty blue paper for that. And I'll have to bring back in, well, the big guillotine for this. And I'm going to go with horizontal lines on this. So I'm going to rotate it, cut it on the vertical. And then we're going to use the horizontal as the direction for this paper. I'm just trying to get it right at six inches so that um, I can make a second one. It's good when your projects are like half a sheet of 12 by 12 because then you can always um, duplicate it, right? You can make another one with the other half of the sheet. So I'll just tuck this to the side over here and this will become my slant pocket. It will also become um, some background paper for inside this pocket. It will then become part of the um, crisscross applesauce <laughs> um, pockets that I have going on on this section as well. So um, a lot of this will get covered up, but I'm okay with that. And um, yeah, let's just go from there. I think I may be done with the um, scoreboard, but I'll leave it close by just in case I need it. Okay, so here we have our uh, 
this side is our um, flap that needs a slant pocket so I'm just going to guesstimate what it would be this is a three and a quarter inch I believe or a three inch pocket so I know this can't be any larger than that so I'll just cut it down to about three inches maybe two and a smidgen below three okay and then I will cut my slant from one side to the other and I think I want to make this more of a pocket as opposed to just a tuck so I made this a tuck by not having uh, three sides glued it's just two sides and this is uh, open all the way to the bottom but I think I want to make this one um, a slanted pocket by having me glue three sides there will be a little section right up here right there to be glued okay so this will now live inside here and what you want to do is make sure that everything fits inside of the um, the sheet where the hinges can close this is a hinge where it can close easily without any hindrance from the paper itself or the pocket itself so once you uh, play with the hinge a little bit if things start to bulge out you flip it over and you can just see exactly like where it's bulging and I can see that it's bulging right down here at the edge because I have this little section here so I'm just gonna cut that little section down just a, just a <laughs> like like a nothing right like like that much okay just to reduce the bulk so now my pocket fits in there perfectly. So to um, save some time, I did like pre-prep a lot of the ephemera. Um, I'm also going to like just start gluing things down um, just so that we can move through this a lot quicker and it doesn't end up being a two hour video. <laughs> into our video so here I'm just going to glue this section this section and then we made a pocket not a tuck so there it's glued on three sides and that's gonna live right in here so I always start down here in the lower left corner and then work everything around the paper evenly and that's been working for me ever since I started doing that okay so now we have a cute little pocket right there if you want to ink go for it I inked my entire last project and that's probably what took forever um, I may just like ink the hinges like right around here and the top just to get rid of some of that stark white and it just basically transform your project just like by doing that much right so here's the hinge on this side okay and then I will need another piece to go down inside of this um, this pocket right here not a whole lot of it just a little sliver so this is the pocket I only need about an inch if that much yeah I'll take an inch so, um, let's see, I want it to be on the horizontal, so I'm just going to cut away one full inch off of the bottom here. Okay. And then this is six inches, so I will then cut this to six inches. Mm. Okay, so this much of it is what's going to get tucked down inside here. You won't see much of that, and that's where that's going to go. 
and that's just to keep everything consistent so yeah I wanted my my lines on the horizontal and I'm just using our glitter in this precision tip it's uh, could have used glue stick probably would have worked out better but it's all good everything's good okay and then that'll become my little hidden pocket right there I'm just gonna glue this up and glue this side up I'm gonna stay close to the edge to create the maximum amount of space inside of this pocket and then put some clips on it to hold it shut And as the glue is drying, I'll go in and ink around the edges. So now we have our two side flaps, which is perfect. It's working out really well, really quickly. I don't want to jinx it, but it is. And here we have our inside base. So I can, I know I can, glue down this side onto here. So let's just do that. And that's just, again just our glitter glue. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, this is just some, um, uh, what do you call it? Paper pack cardstock, okay? Single sided paper pack cardstock, nothing fancy. Okay, that's all it is. So I just glued down my first flap right here, okay? Looks like my battery is flashing at me. Let me change my battery and I'll be right back. Alright, so um, this side is complete. The other side that we need to do um, would be this side, which would go over here. But I want this to wrap around my inside pocket. So here's how I'm doing my inside pocket. I like the background, so I'm going to keep the background. I'm going to take a piece of paper, let's say, let's take a piece of cardstock, like a little piece of craft paper, and I want to use this as my inside flap with those pockets on it. I can measure this. This is a six by six sheet. I will score it. by six I'm gonna score it at I know this is four and change so let's just score it at four and a half and see where we get okay, okay. So I can cut away this section right here. I've scored it at four and a half, and I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so now I can um, figure out where my hinge is going to go. I kind of like this little bunny, that squirrel, raccoon eyes. Um, I'm just going to, oh, there's a fox. I'm just going to, um, just line it up on here, pencil mark it, and then we'll score it. I don't have a pencil. I have a pen and this will work just fine as well. So whatever this is, is where we're going to score. Let's see. Let's see where it ends up being. Perfect. Three and a half. Okay, we took a six by six, cut it down to four and a half, and then we scored it at three and a half. So far, so simple. And this will be our inside hinge for our little um, slanted pocket. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Cut away all of these excess uh, triangles right here just to reduce the bulk on the back side of the project. 
because a paper bag has to go back there. Okay, so here's that, and then here is our hinge, which will go over it, and then that will fold over like so. And then we can glue our bag down on the back. This is going much quicker than my day that I spent <laughs> creating the other thing. All right, so let me move my project base. This is the part that gets like l really tricky for me. Um, what I had to do uh, was get some zigzags going on here. So um, let me just grab some paper, just any paper. I got some, well, that doesn't really go. Well, it might. I got some brown. I've got. Um, some floral print and uh, I have some more of the Fox and others Fox and friends over there so yeah I can do some of this some of that some of this and then yeah we'll do probably two or three of each and let's just make some pockets right so here's my base Okay, has a little flap. Um, I'm gonna start with my dark blue at the bottom. So now that I know that this is going to be the base, I can cut the blue paper down completely because I don't need all of this. And what did I say this measured? Three and a half. Perfect. Let me just. Measure twice, cut once, guys. You cut it twice. <laughs> you try to cut it twice, it's not going to work out. Okay, so I'm just going to get it right at three and a half. And. Okay. Same thing with this. These flowers have no direction, so I'm just going to cut it at three and a half. And here is my last sheet. Okay, and it's already cut to three and a half. Or there's about, yep, three and a half. All right, I'm gonna need my guillotine. So, um, I'm just gonna cut angles and I'll just let you see what the process is because I really don't know how else to explain it. So, this one will be my base. And um, uh, this will be my bottom, the bottom of the pocket. So I need to cut this side smaller. And I just rotate the, I just rotate the paper inside the guillotine until I find the right angle. There's no science behind this. It's just, it's just however, however you feel, okay? And if you make a mistake, it's just paper, okay? I'm telling you, I spent all day playing with this, trying to get the right angles. And it was a process, it truly was. So that's gonna go there. That'll be my first, uh, my first card, or first pocket. Um, the next one, I want the wider side over here. Again, it does not really matter. It'll all work itself out. I hope you guys can see this because it really does work itself out. <laughs> you can spend all day tugging and pulling at this paper and it's just gonna do whatever it's gonna do and it'll work, trust me. And then I need one to counterbalance that on the opposite side. So there we go. That'll go somewhere near the top. I got to get my little buddies in here. So this one needs to be wide at this side. Oh, I hate to cut you off, raccoon, but bye-bye. He will go over here. Or not. 
we will go up here above this one. So now we need one for the other side. Why do I keep doing that? Okay, so that'll go there. My flowers have no direction, so that'll go there. I need another blue piece to go in between there. You see what I'm saying? Like, it just worked out. Like, I had it all messed up, and it just suddenly worked out. I can't even explain how well this process is. <laughs> I mean I can't explain the process very well it's just it just works and then whatever's left over at the top I will put a little piece just to cover up up there probably it will probably be these flowers um, just to cover up that top piece but let's glue this down I have to start with the top piece and work my way down because they're layered on top of each other so just gonna take this entire thing just the way it is roll out my glue mat and I'm going to slide everything just off the paper just like so and I'm going to line it all up right next to the paper so I can see like how how high up am I going on the project so again I have a little gap up here at the top and I'm fine with that I'm just going to use art glitter um, okay so for this section I'm going to just cut a little sliver off right here that'll go back there and I'm just going to use some glue stick on it because it'll be stationary well well okay so this little piece right here will be uh, stationary right back here somewhere okay and then this piece will go on top of it again I'm just measuring or visually measuring the project with the um, the layout that I have and art glitter glue this piece right here does overhang at the top a little bit so I'm just gonna glue it up to where I think it goes and then cut off the excess later okay here we go first piece is going down oops too high too high come down okay So you see what I mean there will be some overhang um, around the, the top section all right so there's that my second piece is going to go right here and glue down on three sides again anyway guys I hope y'all are having a great day this is a fun day Friday video um yeah just enjoying the crisp air because it finally it has finally cooled down here in central florida what a crazy time of year like i just sometimes can't wait for the change of weather and then sometimes it just takes so long to get here it's like oh my god give me a break this heat so yeah i just hope y'all are having a great day and um, again this is just a little something that you can definitely um, just give to a person who has no idea what junk journals are right and um, or someone that you've already given a junk journal to and they're like I don't know what is <laughs> you're like here this is what you can use in your junk journal you can make one of these or use one of these to um, to house some of your concert tickets or 
you know, grocery receipts or whatever, whatever they're into. So I'm just lining this up based on the previous and then smushing it down straight edges okay that's the important thing regardless of what direction these are facing you always want to get straight edges on the side again here's another one so your pockets will be of various heights or you know depths but as long as you have a straight edge it does not really matter Well, I almost forgot which way this needs to be glued. Okay, so, yep, straight edge, glue down here. Glue up this side. And then glue over here. Sometimes I just talk out loud to myself just to remind me of what it is that I'm working on. It gets... Um, it gets to be a little, a little bit of uh, dead air if I'm not talking. <laughs> so yeah, I just, uh, just talk out loud just so you guys can hear what my thought process is as I'm going through this. So this one again will be glued on three sides right down here. And up the side here. And I will glue this down straight edge to the bottom. Starting to look familiar, isn't it? Kind of like the previous one that we made. And then this last one right here, I'm just going to place down at the bottom here for contrast because I feel that it needs to be weighted with a dark color at the bottom. And it also helps tie the entire project together. So yeah guys, this can be made with anything. If you have fancy Tim Holtz paper, it can be made. Basically all we did was just take a 12 by 12 sheet and cut it in half and then worked our way around from there but if you have fancy Tim Holtz paper go for it cut it up use it I've been trying to hoard mine I'm very guilty of that but I just realized like I have to use the paper up I have to I can't hoard it forever all right and now we have our little pockets and tucks I'm so pleased with how fast this is working out I'm just going to use my scissor for the sake of time, I'm just going to cut away all this excess uh, white paper on the back here. And again, if you feel like inking, please, by all means, go for it. Like, I think ink helps create distinction and um, separation between uh, two papers or two pages and it also creates contrast so by all means ink away I love ink I love inking everything but sometimes for the sake of time we can't spend all day inking all right I think that's about I think that's about it hang on one sec let's see all right, so here's my little flappity doodah that's going to go right here with all my little pockets and tucks. And here's my little side pocket that's going to go over here. This looks better than, pff, I mean, really, this looks better than the Tim Holtz one. <laughs> I don't know I mean I love a good grunge but and you know I like I like this project a lot but I just love the fall and this just looks so so good <laughs> I don't mean to toot my own horn or anything but gosh this looks good all right so here is um some floral man I wish I had glued that back there too late Anyway, that'll get covered up by something in that pocket anyhow. Let's just go ahead and glue this down. 
So here's where my outside hinge is going to go onto this uh, inside pocket section. So that's about how much I need. So I'm just going to cut it really close to it. Again, we're reducing bulk, guys. Right, so don't need a whole bunch of bulk on the back of the project. And let's see if I still have the same amount of space. Yep, just a little less, but it's all good. It's all good. All right, let's do it. We're going to, I'm going to glue this down. So here is the pocketed hinge. I'm just using our glitter. It dries fairly quickly. Sometimes too quickly. I'm lining everything up. It's fitting in there really nice. It's a little big, but I could live with the smidgen of an inch that's hanging over there. So I'm just going to push this in really close to the to that score mark, that hinge that we made right there. Push it all the way in nice and close. And then I'm going to put this one right on top of it. Now would be a good time to double check your project and make sure that everything is facing right side up. And it is. So again, I'm just going to put this down right on top of this previous one, really close to the edge. And fold that over. So because of, uh, like I said, there's some bulk back there, I'm just going to clip it until it's like permanently dry. Right, and make sure everything is nice and tight. There. All right, so here comes the fun yet interesting part. We need to figure out how to create a closure for this. My paper bag will be back here, but I need to get this elastic around the front to hold the whole thing together and then glued right here on the back. So initially I used um, Fabrifix, but for, um, and then I went in after, after that, I went in and did some hot glue on top of that. So just get it centered where you think it'll go. Just grab a little bit of Fabrifix, just a little dab on either side of this back cover and pop down each side into the Fabrifix. Fabrifix does take long to dry, so a little bit of hot glue over on top of that will hold it for you. And this hot glue is super high temp, so please guys, please, please, <laughs> please be careful if you're using hot glue in this project. Um, hot glue will burn you, especially one like this is a shore bonder glue gun and um, yeah it will it will scald I do have those little finger cots that um, protect but I don't have time to look for it <laughs> I mean I know where it's at I just don't have time to go get one all right and then I'm just going to fabric fix the entire thing with the paper bag so here is my front of my paper bag I'm just gonna glue it down like so. Hot glue does create like a third hand for you for example because I would have to sit here and hold that in place until my fabric fix either got tacky or started to dry or what have you so um, my hot glue does help in that regard and I just oops I just need to move this elastic over we don't want it to be too slack or too tight 
and I'm just going to pop this down right on the back here. Nice and centered. Um, it's again, the project is a little bit bigger than the paper bag, but I, I'm okay with that because this is going to get clipped in to my journal. And my fingers are covered in glue. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's our little, our little ephemera holder. I did use some Rick Rack uh, Sisal ribbon or twine ribbon on the previous and I think that looks really cute up there at the top so I will do the same thing with this one. But um, I need to let this dry just for a few. So while that's drying, let's talk about um, the ephemera that's going into this one. So. I'll close up all my glues so again I just have a bingo card I inked around the edges that'll go into the back pocket okay just like it did on the previous um, I have here some laundry tags now you can get this in bulk on Amazon or where have you and I think if I remember I will put a link in the description box down below but yeah some laundry tags will go in here Again, I need to let this dry before I can tuck things. So I'm just going to clip it and, um, and remove the elastic to the back. Okay, so yeah, I just got it all clipped in back there holding the elastic in place so that um, we can talk about what's going in. All right, and um, I have here some tags that I made. These are some convertible tags. They have little dangles at the top with um, a ball, no, um, not a ball nose clip, a ball pin. A couple of dangles that I made um, previous videos. This is a convertible so it slides to the right. I forgot what I called this. I don't know. It's sort of interactive but um, I'll put a link for that video up here as well. Um, yeah so in here there's a bunch of little pockets and tucks uh, spots there's a little belly band in here and then it all just rotates right back on top of itself with a uh, brad same thing with this one and this these are my fall um, projects that I made just recently I'll have to look for the video though um, another convertible with a couple of pockets down in here just a few tickets that I tucked in and um, down here there's another little hidden something oh there's an owl okay so yeah just a couple of little tiny brads and some standard size brads and an eyelet at the top and you can easily make this but again I'll put a link um, so here I have quite a number of little bits and bobs and doodads that I want to include into this project I have a little toucan or I don't know some sort of a bird um, just some things man like here's some more tiny Tim I mean, uh, Tim Holtz tiny people uh, paper dolls right they'll go in there I'm just gonna embellish it with some of this stuff this will all go in there here's another one of those little labels that I made that'll become my uh, little tab uh, for the closure and then yeah just a bunch of little little somethings that will make it look pretty here um, are some oh I can do this with my collage yeah I can just collage these people right on the front or maybe maybe these two little cute kids I like this I like this <laughs> reminds me of me and my son um yeah and then this was all from that paper pack it's just some uh little what is this two by three inch uh little journaling cards and tags and whatnot so all of this can get tucked into all of those pockets back there so let's just take a look and see what do we have these are two by three inches so let's see if these fit it's a little tight but it's in there let's see this pocket yeah it'll go in there so yeah I'll just incorporate some of these guys the raccoon um, 
And these can all get cut down, you know, like they don't have to stay this size. Two by three is about the standard size for a journaling card. A little pumpkin. Uh, I like this one. Happy Autumn. So, yeah, that's all we're doing right now is just embellishing our project so that... And these will go into maybe another project because I still have plenty of things left to put in here. So maybe, just maybe. Nope, that does not fit there. Oh, I forgot. We need to put some journaling paper over here. Just so happen to have one right here on my desk from the previous project. And this it's going to go right here on the inside of that flippity doodah pocket. I'm just going to use my pen to mark where I need to cut. Right there and right there. And then I will glue this down flat. So, yeah, guys, the project is running a little bit longer than anticipated. I mean, actually. You know, it's moving along. Like, we're, we're not stagnant. We're moving along. It is working out. But, you know, I thought when at the, at the rate that I was going earlier, that we'd be done by now. But you find all these little things that you forget to do. And they're absolutely needed for the project. But I will only do two things on this besides... Um, Besides uh, tucking in some of the standard, I'm not going to do the collage for the front. I'll probably do that later off camera. But you guys get the idea. You know, it's not rocket science. It's just paper crafts. <laughs> I think I'm going to get a t-shirt that says that. It's not rocket science. It's just paper crafts. Okay, so yeah. And whatever's overhang, I will cut that away because I need it to fit inside of here. Okay. So now we have a little journaling space right here. We have our little backdrop right there. And that is definitely where I can place um, my little collage of people. They can definitely live right in there. Here I'm going to tuck uh, one of my interactive tags. And now I see why I did um, uh, the slanted tuck pocket. Because you can fit a lot more into a slanted tuck as opposed to a full-on pocket. So, note, uh, food for thought when you guys are making yours. You may want to just stick with uh, the slant, the slanted pocket, depending on the size of yours. But you can fit a lot more into a tuck than you can into a pocket. All right, just a lot more stuff can go down in there. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, yeah. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna tuck in some of these. Hello, Dolce. Hello. I know it's dinner time. You don't need to come in here and shake your little bell. I can tell you're hungry. There's a little postcard. Oh, how cute. So I will place that there. That there. My little people. Um, yeah, I'll place them in the middle. And, um, and then I'll just uh, embellish with all these little stickers and goodies. Some of these are stickers, some of them are not. So it's all like trial and error when you're when you're using them. So yeah. Just you just test it out until you get what you want. So yeah, this does take a little bit of um, self-preference. However, you want to see this on here is how you can do it, but yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to let you suffer through and watch me do this. But, um, yeah, I will just do something like, something like that. Okay. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to leave you 
somewhere is about right here and um, I'm just gonna place this little sentiment right there it says give thanks I mean why not Um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing fun and crafty things in your crafting spaces and enjoying the weather. I know it's not the same. I'm in Florida and you're not, but, or probably not. But, um, yeah, I love this time of year, guys. So, I love this time of year even when I lived in New York. You know, I just love the change of season. It's just so, so nice. And um, I will place my little 100% handmade little tab right there on the front cover. Whoops. And I only need to glue about half of it or just under half, maybe. A little more than half. Oh goodness. Scary times. Scary times when things start to fall. Okay. Don't want to cover up too much of my raccoon. I like him. So there. I mean I don't like raccoons personally, but I like that guy. Um this little bird can get tucked in back there. A little tag I mean just about anything can get tucked into these pockets I want to make sure that I am using a pocket and then as my elastic dries I will go in with the rickrack um, ribbon on the inside of the paper bag right there all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a crafty day um, stay naturally curious guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up and um, don't forget to share videos with your friends and family because that helps my channel to grow and I do appreciate each and every one of you who have subscribed to the channel and then hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified each and every time that I upload a new video check out the links down below I will remember to put a video up here for you guys to see how I made these really cool tags and um, whatever else I promised you during this video. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll definitely talk to y'all in the next one. Bye.